and welcome into First Take. Thank you so much for being with us. Larry Fitzgerald will be with us later on. Lots to get into with Ooh. him here with Skip Bayless. I'm Molly Karam. Stephen A. joins us from New York City. Hi, guys. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? How are you? I'm doing all right. Slight little headache, but I'm all right. Uh -oh. I'm ready to roll. Well, I hope I don't make it worse. <laughs> oh, we know that's going to happen. You always make it worse. I know. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Steph Curry scored 31 points, including 13 in the fourth, as the Warriors overcame a 10-point fourth-quarter deficit to defeat the Clippers. Curry has 179 points this season. Only Michael Jordan has scored more in his team's first five games of a season over the last 30 seasons. Stephen A., what did this game tell you? Well, what it tells me is that there's an uphill climb for the Clippers to catch the Warriors. The Warriors are clearly the superior team right now. They just seem to have the Clippers number. They've won five straight at the Oracle. Um, more importantly, the Clippers have no answer for Steph Curry. When it counts most, outside of their ability to deny him the ball and limit his number of shots, they certainly don't limit his level of efficiency. He finished with 31 points. He hit two th key three-pointers in the fourth quarter last night. Um, you know, not only that, when they went small, it worked to their advantage because once again, the Achilles heel for the Los Angeles Clippers is a guy I believe would be exponentially better in big time as a center if he could hit free throws in DeAndre Jordan. But because he can't hit free throws, you can't capitalize on whatever prowess he has offensively and defensively when he's on the court. If they go small, it neutralizes him. A couple of three-point shots, Skip, that Steph Curry hit was over DeAndre Jordan. It was DeAndre Jordan really not putting his hands up because he's in foreign territory being near the three-point line trying to defend when he's a seven-foot center. So that really, really inhibits his ability to be as effective as he's put out there to be. When Golden State goes small, what you have is a situation where you've got Draymond Green playing center, you've got Harrison Barnes at your power forward, you've got Andre Iguodala with Klay Thompson and Steph Curry out on the floor with one another. They're far more efficient offensively because the ball, the ball moves more, it moves faster, and they get more open shots, evidenced by Harrison Barnes going on a 10-point spurt in the fourth quarter to help bring the Los Angeles, um, you know, the Golden State Warriors back from a 10-point deficit. In the end, what this comes down to is that the Warriors have Steph Curry, who is a flat-out superstar. You take into account the fact that they can go small and really cause problems for opposing teams with their offense and that defensively because they can move their feet because they're feisty defensively and can, they can really get up in you and you can't afford to go big against them because it will really hurt you they seem to have the ingredient to beat the Los Angeles Clippers and what I stole from this game is that the Clippers will be competitive the Clippers will fight they wouldn't get swept or anything like that but in a seven game series it doesn't seem like they'd have an edge against the Golden State Warriors. They just seemed ill-equipped to deal with the arsenal that the Warriors throw their way. Hmm. Not sure I agree with your, your final analysis here, but I do, before I launch, I want to give you credit because yesterday we talked about how Golden State was favored at Oracle at home by eight. And you said you would take those eight points in the Clippers. You said this would be, to quote you, a nail biter. You were absolutely right about this. I thought it could be a quasi blowout, maybe 15 or even 20 points, because that's what Golden State has been doing to everybody else so far on their schedule. Here's when I thought I was dead right, Stephen A. Smith. You realize with 7.56 to go in the half, in the first half, midway through the second quarter, the yeah. score was 46 to 29 home team. Think about that. 46 to 29, Golden State up when Steph Curry hit another impossible. How did he do that? Off balance three. My guy from Vanderbilt, Festus Azili, actually got fouled on the screen on that play. So he's going to get a free throw on top of Steph's three. They had to go to the review on that, and they, they decided that it was almost like simultaneous launch and foul. And Oracle went, as we all know it can, bananas. And it, was, it felt like, once again, not that they had won the championship, but, but it was a big celebratory moment for that arena and that home team. And I think they were feeling themselves. I think they got maybe a little too full of themselves. 
And I'm here to tell you from that moment all the way into the fourth quarter till five, the 532 mark of the fourth quarter, do you realize the Clippers that you said would make it close outscored Golden State 68 to 41? They went on a 68 to 41 run. Think about that. At Oracle, the Clippers did that. I was highly impressed with the Clippers. It, it gave me pause to think maybe the Clippers can compete down the line with a Golden State that just looked like an unbeatable juggernaut for two, three games. It also gave me some hope for my Spurs. You know, maybe, maybe there, there's some flaw here. There's some Achilles heel because if you get outscored on your home floor, 68 to 41, wow, it, it, it shows some vulnerability. So I went a little deeper into the numbers and I said, how did that happen? Well, guess what? In that stretch, our man Steph went one for nine, one for nine in that 68 to 41 stretch. So I, it, the bottom line is, they go as he shoots, as he goes. And yet, Harrison Barnes, remember, the, the, the Clippers went up 10 mid-fourth quarter, went up 10 at Oracle, and Harrison Barnes was the first to stem the tide because in a two-minute stretch, he scored 10 quick points. Then down the stretch, down the last 532, Steph Curry made four out of five shots. He made three threes. Well, that's just too good, as you say. He's a superstar and nobody could guard him. And the, the stats showed that when Chris Paul tried to guard him, that was a mismatch. He was eating up Chris Paul. When they mixed and matched on him through the 68 to 41 run, you know, Austin Rivers tried him. I'm sure everybody took some turns on him, but that seemed to bother him a little more. But, but my bottom line was, I think Golden State just took its foot too far off the gas. I think they thought, here we go with another 50 point Memphis kind of a blowout. And in the end, when, when it was time to, to snap back, to, to hit that switch again, Steph Curry really hit that switch. So he goes from a one out of nine jag and then makes four out of his last five shots, ball game. But you were right, the Clippers made it close. And I came away very impressed with the Clippers' fortitude, their, their guts, their character, their hang-in ability. Go ahead. Well, I, I'm impressed with the Clippers as well. I understand that the Clippers are legit. Please don't get me wrong, but we're talking about them going up against the reigning defending NBA champions. And a guy with Steph Curry, uh, first of all, this, this notion that he's six feet, six feet one, that's a lie. Steph Curry is a legit 6'3". He's got a legit two to three inch height advantage over Chris Paul. I've stood next to both of them on several occasions. I know this. Not to mention the fact that when you look at Steph Curry being guarded by Chris Paul, Chris Paul is a quintessential point guard and we know that he can defend. But Steph Curry, because of his marksmanship, is the kind of guy you've got to have a taller body on him. Somebody that's capable of getting in his face and trying to impede, yep. impede his, his vision towards the basket. It. That's not Chris Paul. Chris Paul can't do anything with that. It's just that simple. Chris Paul, on another note, had you know had had his numbers for this game. I think what did he? I think he had 24 points. But in the end, he only had four points in the second half. And you got to do better against yep. Golden State. You need more from Chris Paul offensively. But again, going back to Golden State. Certainly the Clippers have a lot of heart, and you know they're not going to give up, and they have the talent to make any game interesting against anybody. But if you're the Golden State Warriors and you're beating them when Azealia is in the lineup, and then you take him out of the lineup and you go small and you continue to find a way to beat them, I'm not looking at a 68-41 to 41 run that the Clippers went on. I'm looking at when the game was on the line, when it counted most, when you had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter, somehow, some way, here come the Warriors, and there was little to nothing that you were able to do about it. These are the same Clippers that were blowing out the Houston Rockets in Game 6 of the Western Conference Semifinals in Los Angeles at the Staples Center last year. 19 points up with a little bit of time left in the third quarter. And the Houston Rockets, led by Josh Smith, along with Harden. I can't even say Harden because he was on the bench a vast majority of that time. But there were some no-names along with Josh Smith and the Houston Rockets at the time. They went on a 49-9 to run. And so when you look at the Los Angeles Clippers, yeah, they can make a run, but they can also give up stuff, and they give it up at the most inopportune of times. So the conclusion that we need to draw from this is that the Clippers are a damn good basketball team. They're in a, one of the elite teams in the NBA, but they are second-tier status 
to the Golden State Warriors because the Golden State Warriors are not just champions. They're playing like champions. And the Clippers are playing like a team nipping and tucking at their heels but can't quite grab a hold of them as of yet. It's just that simple. History on Golden State side. The Warriors are the fifth team in NBA history to start consecutive seasons 5-0. Three of those teams went on to win back-to-back NBA titles in those seasons. Now to the